Before diving into the art, I must reclaim these screens. In the meantime, I've enlisted AI to assist with storytelling. Let's take a peek. Once upon a time in the vast African savanna, there lived a legendary lion named Leo. Leo was not an ordinary lion. He was a majestic creature with a mesmerizing feature that set him apart from all the other lions of his pride. His striking deep blue eyes. Leo's story began on a warm summer night under the brilliant African stars. The sky was ablaze with twinkling constellations and the heavens seemed to celebrate his birth. As the constellations aligned to form the constellation Leo the Lion, the universe bestowed upon him a gift that would make him truly unique among lions. From the very moment he opened his eyes, it was clear that Leo was special. His eyes were a captivating shade of blue, a hue that was as rare as it was enchanting. The other lions in the pride were in awe of his stunning appearance. His blue eyes seemed to hold the wisdom of the ages and a deep, mysterious magic that drew all creatures of the savannah to him. As Leo grew, his striking appearance was matched only by his bravery and wisdom. He became known as the protector of the pride, defending them against the perils of the wild and leading them to bountiful hunting grounds. His blue eyes, it was said, had the power to see into the hearts of those around him, revealing their true intentions and guiding his decisions with uncanny accuracy. Leo's fame spread throughout the African savannah, and he became a symbol of strength, courage and wisdom. The other animals revered him as a king among kings, and his presence alone could bring a sense of peace to the wildest corners of the wilderness. As generations passed, the story of Leo, the lion, with the captivating blue eyes, was passed down from one pride to the next. He became the embodiment of the Leo zodiac sign, symbolizing the qualities of those born under its influence. Fierce determination, unwavering courage, and an enduring sense of regal majesty. And so every year, as the stars aligned to form the constellation Leo, People around the world would look up at the night sky and remember the legendary lion who had inspired it all. Leo, with his magnificent blue eyes and golden mane, would forever be a symbol of strength and beauty. A reminder that even in the wild and unpredictable world, there was always room for a touch of magic and wonder. Hey, you know, that wasn't too bad. There were a few clips that were duds. The voiceover was fun, but I think partway through, a second voice was used. So that was a little distracting. Visually, it really did miss the whole point of the Leo's blue eyes. That being said, it's a great start to building a character's backstory. Let me know your thoughts about AI-generated videos in the comments below. I am a Leo, and what better way to celebrate than to create some art? Of course, before I do that, I have to rid my screens of the last project I worked on. I don't usually film cleaning my screens or the Emulsion application, but I thought this time I would share them with you. These steps are very cathartic and thereby allow my creative thoughts to flow. It is the part of the process that puts me in the right headspace to create. Now, at this point, I've already used the emulsion remover and scrubbed my screens clean. However, as you can see, there is some ghosting of the previous images left behind. To get these silk screens completely restored, I'm using a haze remover. What you can't see during this phase is the brainstorming of what imagery and theme I want to work with. The only thing I know for sure is that I want something that represents August, which is a very broad topic with a load of possibility. Here's a quick look at my project guidelines. 5x7, silkscreen print, CMYK processing, and photorealism. As a final step, always ensure that your screens have been cleaned with a degreaser before you apply emulsion. In this case, I'm using dish soap. 
While this recording is obviously sped up, the entire process of cleaning six silk screens took a full day to complete. These screens must be fully dry before the next step. If you ask me, every cat's got a little bit of Leo in them. We may not all have those golden manes, but we've got the heart of a wild cat, just like our legendary friend. And as for these blue eyes of mine, well, let's just say they're my own touch of magic. It can be a tricky fickle to try and film under yellow light in the dead heat of late summer. Wearing protective clothing is essential because this stuff does not wash out of clothing. I'm getting everything ready before I shut out the light and close the door to my dark room. I will need the following, a rubber mallet to close the bucket lid, photo blue emulsion, the screwdriver to open the lid, an old gift card, and the emulsion scoop. I'm only coating one side of my screens. From my understanding, it's best to coat both sides for durability, especially if you're creating a lot of copies. In my case, I'm only producing a few. Once the bucket is open, I put on gloves and pour emulsion into the scoop, filling it about halfway deep. It's important to have a plentiful supply of emulsion while covering each screen because we want a nice and even application. I want to ensure to keep the scoop level and steady to produce an even layer of emulsion. I place the scoop on the floor first to let the emulsion settle level. Not gonna lie, this part is killer on my back. I'm tilting the scoop into the frame until the emulsion spreads evenly across the frame. I've run this in real time so you can see just how slow and steady this step is. It's difficult to see, but once everything is level, I can swipe steadily upward until just before the top of the frame. Then I tilt the scoop away from the frame and allow the emulsion to settle again before pulling completely away, which prevents dripping. I love the sound of the swipe. You can also tell how even the application is just by the sound. One word of advice, avoid multiple passes. Going over the work with a second pass usually causes an uneven mess. So have patience. I looked out here with every screen working out well, but this isn't always the case. An old gift card comes in handy to scrape the leftover emulsion back into the bucket. This can be a very messy process, especially if you're like me and don't really have a steady hand. It should be noted that this stuff will stain the laundry tub, but it does clean up with the emulsion remover just like the screens. Day one is complete. Preparing the silk screens takes an entire day because drying time needs to be factored into the process. I thought I'd test out how to photograph in the dark room, but my iPhone seems to do a great job at balancing the light, so it was easier than I thought. My video is mostly filmed using my DSLR camera and shows very dark in that back corner. While these are curing overnight, I'm going to begin working on the art. I 
I had a few ideas of photographs I wanted to work with for this August project. I'm a Leo, but that felt too obvious. So I, wait, is that it? Yep, albeit there it is. When I hear the word Leo, this is exactly what I visualize in my brain. As I was saying, I'm a Leo, and this time of year, I'm connected with the wildcat. Leos are lions with blue eyes, or so it goes in my world. It isn't common for lions to have blue eyes, but this juxtaposition next to their yellow gold fur is captivating. While I think I've found the image I want to work with, it just seems wrong to push forward without considering any other ideas. Maybe I could do a horoscope series of prints? It could be fun, but I think there are some signs which may be a little trickier to represent. Maybe I want to work with skin tones and produce images that would present well as a tattoo. When I think of imagery associated with August, I see fields of sunflowers. Because I'm working at a five by seven inch scale though, I want to focus on a single subject. After scouring through images, I was drawn to this image in particular. It steps a little out of the box in the sense that we're seeing the backside of the flower. Flowers tend to follow the sun throughout the day, so this feels more like we're viewing the scenery through the eyes of this flower. Fire! Who doesn't love a good summer campfire? What a great image to finish off the summer with. Well, you already know my decision, and a photograph reference has been chosen for my new baseline image. First, I'm opening up the image size and resizing my image to seven inches high. Because I am printing this image, the resolution should be set to 300 pixels per inch. You'll notice my width is a bit over five inches. I'm gonna fix that by changing my canvas width to five inches and it will crop my image for me. For now, I'm leaving my image set to RGB mode while I play around with different filter options. The Camera Raw filter is my favorite go-to tool to enhance images. 
I want to emphasize those blue eyes even more than they already are and intensify the vibrancy or saturation of the color overall. Finally, I broke down and purchased CMYK inks, which is long overdue. Now I should be able to produce full process color prints, which means I have to convert my image to CMYK. I can then switch my channels layer and export each channel to generate each image file. Convert each file to a bitmap image. My bitmap's output is set to 230 pixels per inch with a halftone screen setting. I've set my frequency to 55 lines per inch at an angle of 22.5 degrees. I rename each file to match the color accordingly. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And we're ready to print. I recently just ordered a pack of 100 transparency inkjet film for my printer. This one came packaged inside this foil wrap. Last time it came in a box, which is much easier to pull sheets from, so I'm moving these into the box instead. It's really important not to get fingerprints on these sheets because this is film, and prints will stick. Hand washing right before handling helps keep them clean and storing them contained in a box will keep the dust off. In the print settings under printing marks, I'm going to check add labels. Before I print out the bitmap images, otherwise I won't know which one is which once I print them out.
Oops, wrong button. It's a loud fan, but it works. <laughs> I bought some CMYK inks from Desera's and was already prepared to dig right in and use them once they arrived. Mom, mom, hey, mommy, I want to play. Wait, but I should want to to play with that. With that, uh, mom, please. Cyan, magenta yellow and black are always inked in that layer order. Now, all that's left is to make the thing, the thing that up until now, I've only just been preparing for.
Great. Well, I messed up the magenta plate. Rather than placing the transparency film inkside down, I placed it inkside up, which means the mirrored image was processed onto the screen. Ugh. Well, it was a pain to work with. It still turned out okay. Here we go. This is Leo. Well, sort of. Not really, though. While good old Leo here is traveling through the mail to get to you, I've already started on the next project, which is to push this image a little further and try some new techniques. Be sure to subscribe and join me next time. Thanks for watching.